Now, uh, I've used the technical term passive. Uh, you, you might ask, yes, sir, okay, but passive hota kya hai? We've been saying passive, passive for so long now. Uh, passive ke do type hai, beta and smart beta. Beta is uh, index, nothing else. I say like Nifty, total returns index me dal do, you dal. Essentially saying copy paste Nifty ETF. Uh, so copy paste Nifty, either through an ETF or through direct holding. Uh, okay, okay. That's beta. And that is what I meant, ke, uh, which is available at 0.1% or lesser in US as ETF. In India, funny thing is ETFs are still costing like 0.5% more, but at least it is better than the 2% mutual fund. Uh, I call this the elder brother because uh, of the 4 trillion, uh, of the total money in passive investing in US, about 3 fourth is in indexing. It's essentially saying we don't care about. Uh, Outperformance. We just want to invest in equities at the lowest possible cost. Uh, they believe in the so called extreme form of market efficiency that you can't outperform the market no matter what. Uh, so that's that belief then automatically leads to indexing. This is also consistent with the logic of everyone can hold the same portfolio, uh, which means nobody has to outperform, underperform because outperformance is a zero sum game. If you're outperforming, then somebody else can underperform uh, and it has low or no fees. Uh, our session today is about smart beta, which is what I call the younger sibling. I believe in smart beta a bit more than indexing uh, for a simple reason that whatever we may say or do, uh, markets aren't that efficient. People are always trying to you know, bet on something and that leads to consistently uh, poorer or better performance for some subgroups or other. An important driver of what causes uh, smart beta to make sense and what causes the little bit of inefficiency in the market, which we can take up in another session at a later point, but is in a nutshell, I'll tell you, it's behavioral uh, finance. So a lot of us have various uh, behavioral finance, ten behavioral tendencies, which make us take decisions which aren't supposedly fully rational. Uh, there are hundreds of different types of uh, biases, uh, which creep into our decision-making consistently and you know, year after year, quarter after quarter which make us take decisions which uh, look like they can lead to some degree of inefficiency. So smart beta is tracking only that portion of inefficiency, saying uh, there is some inefficiency in the market, we're going to latch onto that, but that inefficiency doesn't require one star fund manager, an analyst, and uh, another five uh, institutional equities brokers with a huge army of analysts of their own. It requires a set of simple rules. Uh, we'll talk about some of those in the subsequent ones. So, uh, in a nutshell, the summary here is smart beta occupies the middle ground between pure indexing and uh, active management, which means if you think of active management as uh, the, the fund manager sitting and saying, okay, uh, this is my portfolio today. Uh, we'll buy this today, sell that today, and so on and so forth. And then they'll come to you and tell your story saying, uh, I believe in value at a reasonable cost, or somebody else may say, I believe in uh, high governance company, somebody else may say, I believe in uh, ROE, and so on. So whatever their story is, or they might have a theme and so on, but that's still actively managed. They'll decide what to buy, what to sell, and so on. Uh, indexing is no theme beyond just saying equity. That's it. And that's just two extremes, right? Very actively managed and indexing. Right in the middle is smart beta, which says, we aren't talking about every day waking up and saying, so what's the good stock to buy today? What's the one to sell? I'm not saying that fund managers turn as much, but it's not an active decision. Instead, we say, uh, so the most common example of smart beta, even before the term was coined, or before the index revolution or the passive revolution was the so-called black book of investing. Right? We talked about how high uh, ROE uh, companies with uh, high growth or high P, uh, P by B ratio coupled with couple of, uh, one more factor led to uh, good performance. And so that was rule-based investing 101, right? And so you, you can outperform many fund managers just by following that rule if you do it patiently enough. So Smart Beta works along those lines that you make a rule, stick to it and keep rebalancing once a year or so to bring everything back to that sort of rule-based portfolio and that's it. So you don't need a fund manager for that. And even if there's a fund manager, he or she should charge like 0.1% or lesser. So that's the smart beta logic. It's somewhere in between, which says you cannot perform the benchmark, but not by much. And you don't need to do much. 
to perform that much better than themselves.